hi everyone, how you doing? Uh, this is Gavin again from Not Another Bonsai Channel. Well, as you can see, I've just been finishing up on repotting the Douglas firs. Uh, I did put a community post out saying that the I felt that the Douglas firs were going the same way as the red firs. And I was experiencing a little bit of rot on some of the stems. So as you can see, I have I've potted them up in exactly the same way, using exactly the same mix of 60% uh, of my sand and grit mix and 40% ordinary garden compost that you can just buy in the you know uh, in the sacks so yeah I have a good 12 pots made up here each one has between two and three in um, so hopefully these will recover now and will go on to become nice plants well this wasn't the purpose of today's video I was actually going to repot my China doll plant right so this is the China doll plant and it's all you can see all of these shoots have taken off I think it was the second or third video that I put on my channel I was trying to encourage the energy to go into these rather than allow this main shoot to take off and uh, get too big and of course the aim of bonsai is to create a nice canopy and create nice ramification of your branches right so my theory to get this out of the pot was quite straightforward I was just going to use an old garden knife and I was just going to cut round the edge Oh yeah, the soil is coming away quite nicely. I haven't watered this plant for, the, for a few days because I knew that this repotting job was coming up, so the soil is nice and dry. So I would imagine that this plant would come out of the pot really easily. Yeah, there you go, you can see the soil is breaking up nicely. See, as I said in that uh, unboxing video where I unpacked the Cocoa Beast, this, um, th th this plant has always been grown in uh, a cocoa mix. You can see that the topsoil is a little bit gritty, this is my usual mix and all I did is I originally I bought this and it's in a, uh, in a black uh, flower pot, or in a black plastic flower pot and I, I transferred it over to this, kept it in the same soil, put it into this pot and then just top dressed it with a little bit of my gritty compost mix. So that's that, so this should be free now, so if I just slightly tip it to the side you should be able to get the plant out of the pot and it's coming nicely, there we go. And there we go, so that is our, our root ball. Right, to do this job, I think we're gonna need Bobcat Bonsai's root hook. I think we're gonna, we may need a saw, so we just have that, just in case. I have my root pruners, and we also have some branch splitters, just in case we need to do any heavy duty work. And I'll also have one of my new handy dandy chopsticks. Right, so I think I'll start with the chopstick and just gradually tease away some of this soil from the, the top of the root ball. Yeah, so this has always been an interesting plant to keep because I'm more of an outdoor bonsai um, enthusiast. I prefer to have, to have trees that I can work on during the spring, leave during the summer, do a light bit of pruning, every now and again and then come autumn just and just let let the plant react to nature in in its normal way and you usually find that you end up with a, a, a more healthier plant provided that you give it any protection that it needs I mean you do need to remember the bonsais are kept in small pots and they are likely to suffer from you know freezing and, and frost and things like that so when we do get any kind of extreme weather I, I do always take those precautions but on, especially with the, with the wind, as, as you saw in one of my more recent videos. So, um, so yeah, that, that's 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 more of my focus. Is I focus more on, on outdoor bonsai trees, but but for this one, this is more of an indoor one. Um, a lot of the little plants in that that Jay sent me from Zenobi Bonsai, they're predominantly uh, indoor plants. So you have the cerises, you had you have the um, what other ones do you have? You had the ficus. You have the sweet plum, so you know that they're all, they're all pretty much indoor, indoor trees. But you know, we'll, we'll give them a go, see what we have, and, and hopefully turn them into some nice trees. Yeah, so all I'm doing here is just teasing away, teasing away some of the soil. Don't want to go too mad, but just want to tease away enough that we end up with quite a nice root base in the end. Yeah, so then we have this root coming out of here. Not a bad root, not coming off in a bad direction. 
two nice roots coming off of it. I think if we plant them in the soil, again, our plain soil plane is going to be down here somewhere so that they should actually say that. I don't know, I prefer this one rather than that one. Now, ideally, you do want it divided into two, but this is going to cross that. Now, do we want to keep this? That's the next question. So if we just try to move that out of the way, this is a large root that is coming way down into here. So where does that go? That comes down there. Now we could, we could train that round that way. That isn't too bad. And then have these two coming off in that direction. That's quite nice. Yeah, I think that could work. That could work. The thing with a tree like this is you need to keep in mind it is an exposed root system and we need to follow the theme of what's going on above. So that's always a challenge with a tree like this. We do have that, we do have this root wrapping around this one. So to have a similar thing going on on that side won't look too unusual. The thing is if we have that and this is going to be exposed, we don't want all these dry funny roots on the side here. They can go. And if you have a look on the other side, we have a root coming down here. Well, we have this root here with nothing on it, so that can go. We have this root here, which... It's on a similar plane to this one. And we, we decided we are going to keep that one, so I think this one is... Yeah, even if we bent it, it's, it bent it around, it's not going to look good. Yeah, let's cut that one off. That looks nice and clean. With all these roots down below. With this one sticking up, that's not ideal. That's good. We have that one coming down, that's what we worked on a minute ago. We have a bit of a dead thing in there. Let's get rid of that. That's good. A fine root growing up there, don't want that. Odd little bits of remnants of fine roots just down here. And if I can get my scissors in there, there we go, that's that. Oh, we have some fine roots just in here, just right in the crux of that root there. Let's get rid of them. Let's get rid of that. And get rid of that. We have the remnants of a Fine root just on there, get rid of that. Bit of a wound on there, bit of a stub on there. Bit of bit of a, a thing on there. Just drive that clean. And I don't think well, that looks too bad. You know, if we imagine the root plane is going to be about here. So as all of these roots thicken up, that should make for quite an interesting root spread. At the minute, I'm only concerned about the, the roots, you know, these roots that you can see, you know, the exposed roots. As these develop, then we can worry a bit more about, you know, our root spread. But for the time being, it's just a case of getting these these exposed roots, or aerial roots, I guess, you know, looking good. But I think that will look good. Right, well, let's bring out the pots and see which one it fits into. Right, so we tried the plant out in this pot. It could, with a little bit cut off the bottom, it could go in that, in that pot. Let's just put it up like that. That's not a bad possibility. I quite like that. Yeah, I do quite like that. That looks nice. We try it in the small, small training pot. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't look too bad. But I think it looks quite as nice as the, as the green pot. And then let's just try it quick in the big one. Yeah, that looks too big. Yeah, it's way too big. It's not going to work at all. I mean, if I wanted this to grow on it and become a big tree, then this would be the pot. But I think the size that we have, all we're mainly working towards is, is growing a nice canopy and allowing these shoots to grow. So I think 
the decision has been made and it is going to be this green pot right there and all we're going to have to do is cut a little bit off the bottom and we're back with the root pruners <laughs> right so yeah so the, these little roots are going straight down we we cut them off they're not serving any good purpose at all let's just cut these off create a nice flat flat root plane on the bottom there's one there like that like that Yeah, I think that's looking quite good. We're not quite even, there's more roots on that side than on the other one. So that isn't too bad. I might see if I can get a little bit more off. I don't want to go too crazy, but just a little bit more. Let's just push the scissors in a little bit more and See if I can get a bit more soil. As I say, you know, from what I've read about these China dolls, they are quite temperamental, so I do hope that this root pruning doesn't damage the tree at all. But that's, you know, my experience keeping it in our conservatory. It seems to be growing very well. that would be the final there's a root coming off that way where's that off to it should be going in that direction there we go so that would be our our final design which i don't think looks too bad well, what i do now i mix up some of the cocoa boost and we're planting this tree up in this pot all right so this is our cocoa boost all-purpose compost and it says on here boost foliage growth Stronger flower and fruit development enhances overall plant vigour and reduces moisture loss. For seeds, rooting cuttings and potting, use, uh, use for planting of tubs and baskets, either for growing vegetables and soft fruits, use for both indoor and outdoor planting. This should be ideal. Now let's just go around usage, uh, seed sowing, da 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 da. So what do we do? Oh, here we go. So, removal packaging, place compressed block in a large container, add 25 litres of water and then wait 20 minutes. So I'm not going to need all of it, because as we can see, if I take this out of the box, it is one big block and there's no way we're going to need all of this for that little, that little tree. So what I do, I chip away a small amount I'll put it in a bucket of water for 20 minutes and then we'll come back and plant up the tree. So as far as I know, this stuff does swell when you put it in water and it does expand to about twice its size. So I think this small block should be ample. Well, I'll get a bucket of water and we'll soak it for a good 20 minutes. Right, so we have two buckets of water. So we have one for our block of cocoa mix. We'll put that just in there like so. Push it down so that it absorbs the water. You can see that bubbling away in there. 
Yeah, this is expanding already. It doesn't set on the box, but I have read that this does expand to about twice the size. Oh, we can see it's breaking up already. There we go, we'll leave that in there. And then the China doll plant, we'll put that just in this bucket of water, just to keep the roots nice and nice and moist. Right, well, I'll, I'll leave that for a good 20 minutes and I'll see you then. Right, so it's been a good 20 minutes and let's just come around here and see how the cocoa mix is doing. So I don't know if you can see, I try and focus. So in here it's turned into a big gloopy mess. But hopefully we can poke this in around to the China doll plant in the in its new bonsai pot and it should should work quite well. Right, so let's give this a go. So I have my two bits of drainage screen just to cover the two little holes in the bottom. So put that just in there, like so. And that just in there, like so. I'm not really a fan of wiring drainage screen in, in place in the bottom of pots, uh, nor am I a fan of wiring trees in pots. Um, just because I feel that over time as the tree grows and the roots fill the pot, the roots will get to a point where they are pushing the plant out of the pot and there is a risk that the wire will dig into the roots. Now um, I do feel also that with drainage screen if you do wire it in it can cause different issues if you have roots that have come through the bottom, maybe they've grown through the drainage screen and come out the bottom of the pot and then when you go to take the, the plant out or the, the tree out of the pot the roots can tangle up and rip and you can end up with all sorts of problems so I think just keeping it like that should be absolutely fine. And also with this mix, it should, it should, um, I mean this is very gloopy so this should definitely hold that in, in place. Right so now, I think it's just a case of taking some of this from the bucket and putting it Putting it into the pot. So I'm just going to take small amounts and just push it into the pot. It's very, very wet, this. I'm just going to place it around the pot like so. And then, because it has those roots on the bottom, I'm just going to make a bit of a bit of a, an opening in the middle. Right, so I've just had the tree down here in the bucket of water, so if I bring this up, and we just place it into the pot here, and just press it in nice and firmly. Yeah, that feels, that feels good. And so now it's just a case of making sure that all of these roots are where we, where we wanted them. So I think we wanted this one to come Oh, that's broken off. Oh, that isn't what I wanted. But that one has broken off. What I'm gonna have to do is get my bonsai scissors and we're gonna have to cut that root off. Right, so we're back with the bonsai scissors. So that's a real shame. I mean, there is a bit of, uh, there is a fine root just on the end. So I'm wondering if maybe we might be able to push that down into the soil. I mean, we'd have to remember that the soil line is down here. So that has a long way to travel. I mean, there is, yeah, there's no way. No, we're gonna, they're gonna have to cut that off. It's a real shame because I did want it to, to match the other side, but you know, these things happen in bonsai and you just have to work with them. So let's just put these down there. Right, so this is all looking quite good, I think. Just careful, don't do it again, Gav. Be careful with these roots, that's it. We, we can now afford to bring these these roots further around because now that that root's gone we have a bit more space here so these can come like that that's quite nice these are all looking quite good all coming down looking very very nice just spin that round to the other side so we have pushed that root in there that looks quite nice we can bring this round to create to fill this gap in the middle that's very nice and this root careful Gav don't break that root there you go with the chopstick, I just plug that in there. Plug that in like that, that's good. I also have a crossing root there. I don't like too much. Let's 
Oh, shit, like that. that's good. Right, so I think what I do is just get some more of my my cocoa mix and just push it in. You know, this is a little bit like the the clay mix that Tony's been using over on Tony bon Tony's bonfire. So here we just push this in. I just push bits, but I just push bits in around the edge for the time being, and then we'll go around with the chopstick and really make sure that it's it's really it's really in there. So it's just go around like this. Just push it in with your fingers. So then with my chopstick, just push that in, make sure that it's gone right down to the bottom. It's very, very messy doing this. It's not, it's a far easier use in my regular mix. But you know, this is what bonsai is all about, you know, experimenting, trying new things. And uh, I do, I mean, this is what the the tree was planted in originally, so I can only hope that the tree is going to do well in this mix. And from what I've read about it and from what it says on the side of the box, it promises some good things. So, you know, I can I can only assume that this tree is going to thrive in this in this mix. We really need to push that in there, make sure that it's it's in contact with the roots. And this this is very wet. This is a very wet mix, so it should. Just naturally go into place. Yeah, just be kind of bully it in. Be really firm. If plants are one thing, they are resilient, and you can, you know, you can't push soil in too hard. It will always spring back and find its own place, and the the tree and the roots will will do their own thing. Mind you, that's for most trees. There are some out there that are incredibly touchy and you know you, you look at them and they die. But <laughs> yeah, a little bit low here, we need some more. Let's get some more from my bucket and stick it in. That's good. That's really good. Yeah, that's nice. I actually find it easier with my fingers than I do the chopstick. You can really push that in. Really get your fingers in there and there you go. That's, you can see that's going down, that's going down a good bit. Let's get some more from the bucket. Really compact it in. And as I say, you know, you can't damage the roots doing this because what will happen is if the, you know, as so this soil dries, it will, you know, will expand slightly and so there's a plane going over. Yeah, so as it expands, it will find its own way and will do its own thing. Making a real mess of my pot. I might put some just in the middle. Now, although this is gonna all be exposed in the future, just to keep these roots alive, it might be a wise idea just to take a little bit of this mix and just push it in there, like so. And then over time, and as it dries and as the tree recovers, we can always just use a chopstick just to, you know, chip that soil away and expose our, our root plane. But for the time being, it's just for the health of the tree. Push that around like so. I just put a little bit behind, just in there, like so. There you go. Just in there, like so. There you go. Do 
the same on the other side. Push it in, build it up. I still have plenty in my bucket, so you know I have more than enough to do this tree. Surprising to think that that small block has expanded into, you know, a good quarter of a bucket. I suppose this is where it pays to read the instructions. You know, many a girlfriend of the past have, have told me that, you know, has told me that, Gav, read the instructions. <laughs> and do I ever? No. <clears throat> but you learn from your mistakes. Yeah. <clears throat> And sometimes that is the best way to learn, through trial and error. There we go, so that is a bit of a mound. I'll just put a little bit more just in here. Just like that. So it's a bit of a mound, but as I say, this is just for the health of the tree and as time goes on, as the tree grows and the, the roots recover, we can gradually, with a chopstick, just chip away some of this soil, expose that nice root base, and it should look like quite a nice tree. Well, I'll clean up some of this mess, and then we'll, I'll put it on my turntable and show you an overall view. Right, so there we have it. There is the China Doll bonsai, all potted up in this new bonsai pot. Looking very nice, if I say so myself. And again, you know, as I say, over time, you know, we will scrape away a lot of the soil and and show off the nice um, root spreads that we've created. But I think over time, this will become a very nice looking bonsai tree. So I'm going to put this back into my conservatory where it was living before, and uh, that, that living there, it absolutely thrived. So I can only hope that it will do the same and it will recover from this this root operation. Well, thanks for joining me on this one. It's, it's turned into a, a beautiful afternoon. As you can see, I've taken my jumper off. I'm now in my t-shirt. And I'm really pleased with this, the way this has turned out. Well, thanks again for joining me. And as always, guys, take care and I'll see you on the next one.